So how do we upgrade the Monday Anza to 72 volts? That's coming right up. Hey guys, it's Rick from Run Playback. In this video, we'll show you how we modded the Monday Motorbike's Anza to 72 volts with our good friends at Detroit Moped Works. The stock version of the Anza has the classic proportions of a 1980s cafe racer, but we added several impressive features that enhances performance and style. So let's dive right in. The stock Anza comes with a 750 watt motor, but we upgraded it to a much more powerful 3000 watt brushless hub motor that we found on Amazon. This high powered motor ensures excellent acceleration and allows for a much more thrilling riding experience. However, the weight of the motor was significant, which is why we added custom steel torque arms that were made in-house at Detroit Moped Works. Battery. The T6 aircraft grade aluminum frame of the Anza had plenty of space for a 72 volt powerful lithium battery that we mounted with a bike bag found on Amazon. This high capacity battery battery ensures an extended range and allows for sustained high speeds of over 50 miles per hour. Controller. Since we removed the stock battery and controller, there was plenty of room to add a 72 volt 80 amp Saab Vuitton sine wave controller where the stock battery was installed. The Saab is a popular controller that provides smooth and precise power delivery, enhancing the overall performance and efficiency of the bike. However, the controller is quite big with a lot of wires hanging off the back. Fortunately, there was plenty of room on the frame to hide the electronics with the Anza gas tank. We are gonna embark on a project of making, I guess, the world's fastest uh, Monday motorbike Hansa. Um, there hasn't been a ton of modding with these. They come really well made from the factory, so not a ton of people have been doing a ton to modify them, but uh, me and Rick are gonna kind of put together a project that we envisioned, I don't know, probably a year and a half ago. We're gonna start it here and then pass it off to Rick to uh, complete the build with his skill sets in that department. The rear wheel is gonna be a motorcycle style wheel, so it'll be a uh, 17 by two and a half, and we're gonna use the Shinko SR244s. And then in the front, we're actually gonna do the 16 by 3 SR244. So 16 is the diameter of the rim, which is what we talk about in motorcycles. On uh, bicycles, they use a 20 because that's what a standard BMX is. So one of the other challenges besides the battery compartment fitment that we think we might be looking at is gonna be putting the more powerful motor on here is gonna create additional torque and perhaps compromise the back of it. So we're gonna need to add a torque arm to support it. You know, the Amazon brackets have just got hose clamps to hold them on. Uh, we're kind of tentative about using that on a strong motor. So what we're gonna do is see if we can find a way to get the arm arms up and then drill and bolt through it to have a little more secure fit. Mondays are great because it's easy to access the batteries. Just some rubber banding under here and you might think that that's a little um, insufficient but in fact the rubber creates a situation where nothing vibrates. So I'm gonna take the cover off of this. We'll have to get the wiring out of there and the cabling out of there. motor mounted up here, faced out. We were able to get the, uh, rein the steel reinforcements in here on both sides, so we're feeling better about that, so we won't get any shifting. We got the Shinko, again, the skinnier, two and a half by 17 in the back. Fatter of the exact same tire, but it's a 16 by three in the front, but it does come out with the same outer diameter. It's looking good, it's feeling good. It weighs quite a bit more than it did before we put this big honking motor on it, but still light with the aluminum frame. So the plan is to get the Sabaton controller in here. Um, we're gonna be able to use some of these mounting holes and uh, as well as these brackets to get that under here. And we'll still be able to use the Monday cover. So Rick will be fabricating some kind of panels for the sides to cover the battery, but the controller will fit nicely under there. So we'll be able to keep most of the uh, Monday stock aesthetic. We are gonna go for some Pook handlebars, um, the brand new reproductions of the vintage handlebars. We use those in a lot of our Mondays. It kind of elevates your riding position. Feels a little more comfortable, especially at speed. Uh, I think Rick's gonna try to check out a different headlight option for it. So I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Top speed and riding modes. With a top speed of over 50 miles per hour, the 72 volt Anza offers a way more exhilarating performance than the stock version. Additionally, the controller provides three riding modes, Eco, Normal, and Sport, allowing you to choose the level of power and efficiency that suits your preferences and riding conditions. Although the Anza is a hardtail and features no front suspension, the increased weight and upgraded tires make the ride feel surprisingly comfortable. Tires and tubes. We removed the stock Anza tires and tubes and replaced them with Shinko 244 Dual Sport Moto tires 
tires paired with Sedona Moto Tubes. These rugged tires offer excellent grip and durability, which was absolutely necessary with the overall power increase, especially on the streets of Detroit. One debt to society later. All right, we're back at Detroit Moped Works, and I did my thing, my part of the uh, job for this build. The Sapaton controller sits right on top of the frame, as it has all this real estate, even the width, almost identical. Then you have all this wiring over here, and then the faux gas tank covers everything up. Now the gas tank, I modded slightly. The run playback sticker, we got the MCR Moped Club sticker, and then I drilled some holes inside of the tank, put a zip tie, and then put the existing straps. And that way, when it goes on the frame, connect it and it should hold. Now the controller is attached with just zip ties. So we have one, two, three, four on the mounting plates. We have an industrial one over here. Probably put another heavy duty one on this side. It's also connected directly to the frame. So the frame might even act as a heat sink. As you're riding, the airflow should go underneath and cool off. We also upgraded the handlebars. These are the stock Pook Maxi Bars. You can find these at Detroit Moped Works. The stock bars were really low. These bars make it way more comfortable. So we got these Maguras or Piston. You need some strong stopping power for 3000 watt motors. Did the custom torque arms at the shop. These were super important. Added some spacers, 180 millimeter rotor, brake rotor. On the other side is a stock brake that I had on some other e-bike, but it did have a Higo connector. So the Higo connector, I tapped into the Sab. So it does have a motor cut off when you hit the front break. So if you're holding on the front brake, you can't uh, accidentally whiskey throttle. So we have the 72 volt and 12 volt step down connected directly to the Sab. And we have it on the frame over here, again, acting as kind of a heat sink. And then from the 12 volt step down, we have three specific lights. We'll turn it on over here. So we have a headlight. I like the light bar. I think it fits this style of bike. I prefer it over the moped, traditional circular moped style. Alex had requested some sort of like LED strip lights, like what I did with the Onyx RCR. So I added those over here. And then a nice LED strip light for the tail light. Now we didn't go so far as to do signals and stuff, maybe in the future, but I think just to have something illuminated at night, you're definitely gonna see this bike. I did install the pedal assist on the bottom bracket using some JB Weld. What's interesting is that the pedal assist, I think is not activated because we don't have a display. So I think on default, it's set at zero pedal assist. We may add a display in the future and then we can see if that actually works. I'm like 95% sure it works because everything's connected. I don't even know if you need pellicis for this thing. Another cosmetic thing we did was the gold chain over here. Did that in the shop earlier. We got Vespa stock replica pedals as well, just to complete the look. The panels that I used to cover up the battery bag is made out of styrene and this is laser cut. So shout out to EV Raceworks for doing this laser cut for us. Basically, I designed this in Illustrator, exported a DXF, sent it over to David at EV Raceworks and he cut this piece out and then I covered it with some gloss vinyl just to match the frame. If you look at it too close, it'll look like a piece of plastic just <laughs> you know, wrapped around the bike. But uh, if you're at least 10 feet away, it looks pretty, pretty cool. And it hides all this, you know, this stuff over here. I mean, it's fine. It is what it is. This is what DIY builds look like, but we had access to laser cutting, so why not? So the battery is a powerful lithium battery. This is 72 volt. This is actually from the Aerial Rider 72 volt conversion that we did a while ago with Hops's bike. The original battery that we tried to fit on here was too tall. So we needed something that fit in the frame and the battery bag that I found on Amazon uh, also worked as well. I think it came out really well. Let's take it out and do the first ride. Handlebars, chain, and pedals. The Anza's stock handlebars put the riders at a somewhat uncomfortable and low riding stance. That's why we replaced them with Pook stock maxi handlebars, which provide a comfortable and more upright riding position. A gold KMC chain was also added for a touch of visual flair to the drivetrain. For the pedals, we went with reproduction pedals inspired by Vespa. These parts definitely contribute to better control and handling while still maintaining that classic retro moped aesthetic. Brakes. To ensure reliable stopping power with the 3000 watt hub motor, the 72 volt Anza is equipped with a Magura MT54 piston rear brake paired with a 100 millimeter rotor. This setup offers excellent braking performance and control even at high speeds. Lighting and frame panels. For lighting, we installed a 72 volt to 12 volt step down converter, which powers an integrated LED headlight bar, frame lights, and tail light. These lights are pretty affordable on Amazon and ensure enhanced visibility and safety during nighttime rides. To complete the look, we use custom laser cut styrene frame panels with a black gloss vinyl wrap to match the bike frame. These panels provide a unique look while also protecting the battery and electronics installed within the frame.
74.2 volts. So we are on the uh, the low power setting right now. Let's see what we get. We're getting quite quite a bit actually. Already up to 20. 22 miles per hour, haven't even made it to the end of this bumpy alley. So even on the low setting, we are looking at a ton, ton of power out of the setup. Ooh. I think, oh, over 20 on low setting, just to the end of the alley. If I can give the bars a little tighten before we get out fully, uh, but we can finish up these little alley runs. So let's see, medium setting, even, even more torque as you can imagine. Five, thirty-eight, and less than a half a block here. So this is this is the power that we knew that we were getting with these bigger tires and the uh, upgraded braking on here. The rigid does not feel bad at all. It feels and with the smooth acceleration, the true true wheels and everything. It actually feels feels pretty great. A lot of speed. I mean, you knew you knew you expected it, but it is definitely doing its job here. Really a ton of fun, really smooth. So uh, we're gonna tighten these handlebars and go out on this final speed run, see what we get out of it. So uh, just now, we noticed the handlebars were a little bit loose, so went ahead and retorqued them. All right, coming around this turn. Very smooth handling on the Shinkos. The rigid bike really lets you feel the road. Coming here, half a block, I'm at 39 miles per hour. Block and a half, I'm at 45. 50 miles per hour in two blocks. So we're kind of holding at 50. We didn't start with a full voltage, but this thing is sure going. 52 and uh, the brakes are doing their job here, this intersection. Compared to a vintage bike, you know, this thing's about the same size and about the same weight. Um, it was lighter than a vintage bike before we put the big motor and the big battery on it, but now we're probably somewhere around that 100 pound mark that we usually get with the vintage bikes. Uh, but it's pulling up hills like a vintage bike does not do. And uh, we are just, just hauling down Michigan Avenue here. Oh, look at that. 53 miles per hour. We're at 54 now and just, just with it, just cruising. Passing the highwaymen, tough guys on the motorcycles. Seems like the structure of this uh, T6 aluminum that they use, this Air, Air Force grade aluminum they use on these Mondays is holding up just fine. Again, pulling up hills in a way that I am not accustomed to on the vintage bikes, even the performance modified ones we tend to usually build them for top end speed, not for torque. This one has got it all. Top GPS speed so far has been 54. And you know, again, I'm a bigger rider on this thing and the battery wasn't started fully charged, so I don't think this thing would have any any kind of trouble hitting 60 out of full charge with a lighter rider or whatever. Cycles. It helps us with a couple projects here and there, as well as slow barbecue. So tons of fun getting some good miles in on this thing, and it's. Uh, so I think this is the first real rip this bike has taken. I'm loving it. I think we kind of built this a little bit more just for promotion, but I think I might might end up riding it uh, quite a bit because it is turning out to be a real pleasure to ride across, across town, good acceleration, good braking. I mean, the rigid really doesn't feel, um, a hard tail as they call it, Harley Davidson, uh, really doesn't feel bad at all. It feels nice and smooth and I actually like it. it. Really helps you to handle and corner. You can feel the road a little bit nicer, especially on these good smooth roads. Bicycle 
because this thing is lightweight and using bicycle components, I'm gonna feel a little daring. Uh, well, you know, with a vintage bike, we wouldn't ride it over these pedestrian bridges. But, uh, on this thing, I don't see why not. Look at that. Passing right by the bridge to Canada here. Yeah, Monday's a really great platform it, for this, it turns out. And, uh, you know, don't want to take take too much credit for the smart pairing between this motor that I picked out and the Monday. It was just kind of a coincidence that it worked out really well, but it is a, a really nice fit. And I am glad that we did this and that we are, that I'm out here having some fun with it. It did just cut out here uh, as I pulled up, so I guess convenient timing. Complete pleasure to ride, handled great. Uh, felt really smooth, especially being a rigid. Plenty of speed for a, a rider of my size on a uh, not fully charged battery. And uh, ha handled well, took off well. Great, great time, great ride. In summary, our Monday Anza 72 volt conversion with Detroit Moped Works was a complete success. The Anza was a perfect platform for adding powerful components, stylish modifications, and advanced features to create an electrifying and personalized riding experience. So whether you seek speed, style, or versatility, definitely visit Alex and the team at Detroit Moped Works for a test ride of the 72 volt Anza or other e-bikes and mopeds. We've also included all of the links to the parts we used in the description. If you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links in the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.